board will now come to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman True. Alderwoman Flowers. Alderman Bosley. Alderman Moore. Alder Alderwoman Hubbard. <clears throat> Alderwoman Triplett. Alderwoman Young. Alderman Conway. Alderman Ortman. Alderman Vollmer. Alderman Villa. Alderman Onowitz, Here. Alderman Wessels, Alderwoman Howard, Alderwoman Florida, Alderwoman Barringer, Alderman Rohde, Alderman Kennedy, Alderwoman Davis, Alderman Schmid, Alderman French, Alderman Boyd, Alderman Vaccaro, Alderman Ogilvy. Alderman Cohn, Alderman Williamson, Alderman Carter, Alderwoman Crewson, President Reed, yeah. Alderwoman Flowers, Alderwoman Young, Alderman Conway, Alderman Ortman, Alderman Wessels, Alderwoman Howard, Alderwoman Florida, Alderman Rohde, Alderman Kennedy, Alderwoman Davis, Alderman Boyd, Alderman Cohn, Alderman Williamson, Alderman Carter, Alderwoman Crewson, 17 present. Quorum being present, I'll ask everyone in the chambers and the galleries who's able to rise to please rise for prayer. Giving all honor to God, almighty God, source of all authority, we humbly ask guidance in our deliberations and wisdom in our conclusions. Amen. I also ask that uh, as we go through our weeks and I, you know, the days this, this weekend and next week, we keep in our prayers Reverend Earl Nance, who had a heart attack, and just you know, pray for his speedy recovery. We will dispense with our regular order of business, take up our courtesy resolution calendar, move for adoption of our courtesy resolution calendar, seconded by all of them from the 20th, all of them from the 15th, and all of them from the 9th. Would you like to approach the dais? Oh, you can Good morning, everybody, and Alderwoman Florida is going to read this resolution, and the only thing that I can say is, wow, uh, what this lady has accomplished in the 38 years that she's uh, been with the city of St. Louis. So we'll do this part of it first, and then we can talk bad about her. <laughs> Whereas we have been apprised that after 38 years of committed service to the city of St. Louis, Lieutenant Colonel Antoinette Phila, Deputy Chief Commander of the Bureau of Criminal Investigation and Support is retiring. Whereas Lieutenant Colonel Antoinette Phila joined the Metropolitan Police Department on September 24th, 1973, as a civilian clerk, on March 18th, 1974, she was sworn in as a commissioned police officer. Lieutenant Colonel Phillip began her career as a police officer in the Mobile Reserve Unit and 8th District. Whereas in January of 1984, Lieutenant Colonel Phillip was promoted to the rank of sergeant. As a sergeant, she served in the 3rd District Juvenile Division and in sex crimes and child abuse. Whereas Lieutenant Colonel Phillip became the first female in the history of the department to serve as a lieutenant when she was promoted to the rank in June of 1987. Lieutenant Colonel Phil served in the North District for five years following her promotion. She also worked in the traffic, traffic safety unit 
And whereas continuing the trend of being the first female to break several department barriers, Lieutenant Colonel Fillo was promoted to the rank of captain in October of 1993. Lieutenant Colonel Fillo served as a captain for 14 years in a variety of command positions, including commander of the 1st and 8th Districts and in Internal Affairs. Whereas a captain, Lieutenant Colonel Fillo was assigned to the position of secretary to the Board of Police Commissioners from November of 2003 to July of 2005. She also served as a commander of the 4th District during her time as captain. Whereas in February of 2007, Lieutenant Colonel Fillo was promoted to the rank of major. She served as the Assistant Chief of Detectives in the Bureau of Criminal Investigations and Commander of the South Patrol Division. And whereas Lieutenant Colonel Fillo served as the Commander of the Bureau of Community Policing from January of 2009 until assuming her current position in March of 2011. Whereas through her distinguished career, as the department colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Phila has received eight chief's letters of commendation honoring her skilled work in law enforcement. Whereas Lieutenant Colonel Phila earned a master's of science in justice administration from Lindenwood University and a bachelor of justice administration from Tarkio College, she is also a graduate, a graduate of the FBI National Academy. Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Aldermen of the City of St. Louis that we pause in our deliberations to congratulate Lieutenant Colonel Antoinette Phila for 38 years of dedicated service to the city of St. Louis, and we wish her peace and happiness in her retirement, and we direct the clerk of this board to spread a copy of this resolution across the minutes of these proceedings. Thank you, Tony. You have blazed a trail, <laughs> and seriously. I had the privilege of having Tony as a captain, and there is no other police officer who is as dedicated to community-based policing. And quite frankly, I'm really sad that she's retiring because I'd like to see her end her career right here as police chief, so thank you. You know, I don't think there's a, a, a bad thing that you could say about Lieutenant Colonel Phila. And she doesn't like Antoinette. Well, I guess she does. That's her name. But she likes to be called Tony. Um, and, and I was fortunate 10 years ago in redistricting when I acquired some of First District. She got transferred down to First District. And that's the first time that I really got to work with her uh, as a captain. Uh, and I just want to point out one of the you know, I think fantastic things that she, that she did, because if you, you look at her career, most of it was on North St. Louis. Um, but when she came down to First District, she started some meetings between her districts where she worked up in North St. Louis and First District. And we'd meet up at the district in North St. Louis, and then we'd come down and meet at St. Anthony's in South St. Louis. And I think, you know, what really you'd have to ask her to see what she was really trying to accomplish, but I think one of the points that she was trying to accomplish is that people, no matter what race you are, we all have the same problems. And as we all sat down and um, became friends, um, that's what we kind of figured out. And then she started the food where we'd uh, have food at these meetings. Um, and then as she transferred out the meetings you know, kind of fell off. But I think, you know, that I would like to see more of that because we get to meet people from other neighborhoods. Um, and it was just, I, I think, mission accomplished with the time that she was there. And here's, you know, a, a police captain at this time, you know, that organized this. And, and it really helped in communications and, I, and, and seeing the, the problems of, you know, of all of our neighborhoods. Actually, we all have the same problems throughout the whole city. So, but I think that's, it's not in the resolution, but it's something that I'll never forget, and I'll never forget meeting the people and um, going up to the, uh, that was the North um, Patrol District, you know, and, and the, what room was it? The, 
I don't want to say the back room, but the conference room. Conference yeah, and, and, and having these meetings. It was really a lot of fun and, and very educational. Um, you know, what she's accomplished, it, it, you know, it's them, the, the steps to follow. I mean, I think for, um, for women, you know, she's, she's done some just hellacious accomplishments here. And I, I think a lot of us would have liked to have seen her, you know, um, stay long enough to, to get into that chief spot, you know, but we've got a chief. And, and right now what I'm going to do is, is, if it's okay with the president, turn it over to the chief um, and let him say, you know, a, a few words too. And Chief Isom, I'm glad you're here and you're on. Okay. <laughs> Before we let Tony. So. <laughs> Well, I'd like to echo those sentiments. Sometimes I would like Tony to be chief as well. Um, <laughs> she, she would do a, a great job. But on behalf of the St. Louis Police Department, uh, I want to say job well done to Colonel Filler. She's done an outstanding job over the last 38 years. Uh, one thing that's not reflected in the resolution is her integrity. Um, having been a person who worked for her in internal affairs, worked with her, and was a part of many of her first, uh, being the first lieutenant colonel, uh, being the first to be of the Bureau of Community Policing, uh, being the first to be over the Bureau of Criminal Investigation, I can say that she has the highest integrity that you can have as a police officer. And that's really what's important to our job. When you come to work every day trying to do the right thing for the right reasons at the right time. And that's the example that she sets for our organization. So I want to thank her for that. And that is what we're about as police officers, providing that legitimacy to the community. So thank you. I hope you have a wonderful retirement and you're able to spend a lot of time in Florida on the beach. <laughs> so thank you. All of them from the 20th. You want to, all of them from the 16th? She sat down, she yielded, but you, she's back up, let's take her. All the women from the 16th ladies first. She okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I just, I was very, you know, sad to hear that she was retiring, but I have to tell you all that I have a special place for Tony in my heart because she's a mother as well. And when I met Tony, that's right, when I met her, we were at an event and it was running late and I said to her, oh my gosh, I'm going to be late picking my children up from school and have to do that walk of shame as my children are not allowed out because their mother didn't get there in time. And Tony got me back to the school in time for my children. So I so appreciate you knowing how it feels as a mom. Uh, all the other things are fantastic, but you've been a great mom too, and you've been a great friend, and good luck. Alderman from the 20th. You know, we always read about these great trailblazers and things like that, but what we don't really recognize often is that they're real people and that they're flesh and blood and have the same emotions and concerns that all of us do. <clears throat> I always think of her as Captain Phila. I know she's a colonel, and I have to always respect that and honor that, and I do. When I think of her as Captain Phila, I don't think of her as Tony. Uh, the major question that we always have to define in St. Louis is where you went to high school, and it was St. Anthony's High School, <laughs> so that's out there. And of course, what she learned in the academy was so very important, but as a person, as somebody who has the intestinal fortitude and the integrity that the chief talked about, Obviously, she learned that from her beginnings and her childhood and her upbringing here in the city of St. Louis. And I always understood that she understood, like uh, Alderwoman Berenger said, what it was like to really be here living in the city of St. Louis. And I don't, I don't think that she ever lost that. The first district has a rich tradition of great leadership, and I probably will mess up some of this. I think, wasn't camp down there at one time? I can't remember. There was a guy who always had the signs that would say you couldn't park, and I can't even remember his name anymore. But there was, uh, Colonel Reagan was down there for a, a long stint, Captain Phila, Miller, Spees, and now Captain Howard. And there's been a lot of great leadership. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Jockham Stoller was in the South Patrol Division. And I know from a very practical standpoint, I'm going to 
miss your departure, not only because you're a great person and because you've provided great leadership in one of the best police departments in the country, but the fact that when I had situations, and they come up from time to time, when I feared for someone's life, that I was able to go to you, and I've gone to others, but specifically you, and I want to thank you for that. Um, and, and those kind of circumstances do come up when the police department has to recognize that there's something that's very volatile in a community. I remember a few times, uh, one of which uh, uh, Alderman uh, Ortman already talked about, and that was bringing together the 8th and 1st districts in a very tangible way with real people understanding each other. And so often I, I talk about, and you practice the fact that People learn to trust one another. They learn to be in those trenches together in a fun way, learning that they're true people, and then they start relying on each other and other things and not seeing everybody else as somehow different or that somehow they can't work together because they're working together. And you did that, so thank you for that. I remember when I was, as part of redistricting, and I know Alderman Ortman already reflected on that a little bit, I was in the rectory of St. Ambrose Church because that's where I was assigned as an alderman to the 10th Ward. And Monsignor Bomarito and others were talking about this film that was going to be filmed, and a large part of it was going to happen at Marquette Park. And I said, for God's sake, is anybody telling the residents around there that they're not going to be able to park, that they're going to be blocked off from their homes, and da-da-da-da-da? So the first person I contacted, obviously, was the captain, Captain Phila. And she worked together with others, with myself, with the people who were coming in and the, all the residents to try to make sure that that went as smoothly as possible. I remember specifically, I don't know if you remember this, when we had a, what I thought could have been a volatile situation with a resident close to Marquette Park who had been doing some things there with good intentions, but it was creating some real disruption. And you sat down, and I sat down with you, but you specifically with this person on the limestone uh, stones there at the tennis courts, and we talked through, sometimes not very happily, but we talked through all of that, and had you not taken that time, and sometimes, I know all captains are busy, but taking that time put something to rest that could have taken a lot of police time and a lot of neighborhood upset, so I appreciate that again. So, the time has come, and you're leaving us, and I'm not happy about that, <laughs> but, I am, but, but, I, but I am happy for you and, and your involvement in the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department has made it better and there will be others whose lives you have touched um, who will also make this department better. And we thank the chief and the colonels and all the people with whom you worked over all these years as well as yourself for what you have contributed to the city of St. Louis and to the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department. And I personally thank you. All the women from the 14th. Um, I don't know Tony very well, but I would just like to recognize her as a trailblazer in the department and one that has paved the way for other women to achieve, or hopefully, as well as you have. And if my gut is right, I got a feeling that Tony won't be too far away. Um, We'll see her around, and she'll be doing other great things. Um, somebody that achieves that much is not one to go away and just uh, hang it all up. But um, I wish you Godspeed and enjoy your retirement, and we hope to see you back in some other capacity. Thank you, Thank you so much for your years of service. You're looking good, by the way, all the women from the 14th. Glad to see you back. Let's give her a round of applause. Alderman from the fourth. Good morning, Mr. President. I rise in support of Captain Filler. When I first got in office, she was, I think she was uh, one of the captains. She was my captain when I, we first got in. The fourth ward has had about six captains. I don't know if we run them out or <laughs> what's going on over in the fourth, but we've had about six captains. And when I got in, being the old male chauvinist I am, uh, I didn't think that a lady was, uh, was capable of handling the type of crime that we had in the fourth ward, but believe me, to the rest of you chauvinists, she's not soft on crime. And we appreciate you and what you've done and the accomplishments you've made in the police department. And I also thought that they were priming you to be the first female chief, so 
I don't know what happened to that. I guess <laughs> Colonel Isom uh, fixed that up real well. So <laughs> we're just proud of you, and we hope that you have, in whatever your endeavors are, we, we will be looking forward to assisting you in whatever you're doing out besides being a police captain, and I, I will miss you. Colonel, thank you. Alderman from 13. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the board, I too rise uh, to congratulate uh, Lieutenant Colonel Phil and wish her the best in, uh, in the future. Uh, I've known her, I think, uh, longer than any other alderman. We were both kids down at uh, Marquette Park a few years ago. Uh, I was an older kid, but um, uh, we've known each other a long time, and she did a great job coming down to the first district. And, um, and I, again, I just thank you for all your years of service. And Chief, I'm glad you're here. I want to thank you. You do a terrific job, doing a great job, and you have, uh, certainly have our full support. Thank you. Any further discussion? Alderman from 11. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just uh, like to thank Lieutenant Colonel, Colonel Phila for uh, taking the time to uh, stop your car and talk to me when I was out raking leaves because the neighbors always thought they finally got me. <laughs> You've always been uh, approachable, accessible, professional. You've been a credit to the uniform, a credit to the St. Louis Police Department, and more importantly, a wonderful representative for our city. Godspeed. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? I'd like to also, uh, before we turn it back over to the Alderwoman from the 15th and Alderman from the 9th, just also add my uh, thanks, uh, for, you know, as a father, as a husband, as an elected official and a resident of the city of St. Louis, I indeed thank you for your many years of service. You know, when we come to do what we do here every Friday and we do our stuff throughout our community, we can do it with a reasonable assurance that we will return at the end of the evening. But some of the folks behind me, uh, and especially Lieutenant Colonel Antoinette Tony Phillip, <laughs> um, they had to raise a family and still not understand if they're going to come home safely at the end of the evening. And they did that to be able to provide a safe and secure city for all of us to live in so that we can raise our families. So I cannot thank you enough for what you've done. Uh, I certainly hope you enjoy your retirement uh, and to your family. I know you have at least one daughter here, these two daughters here. Uh, you know, we thank you for, for you know, what you've done in, in, in uh, you know, understanding that when your mother is out during the day doing her work, you had to be strong and support her. So, Lieutenant Colonel, I cannot thank you enough, but congratulations on your retirement. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, uh, like Craig and, and also Ken. I want you to retire, and I want to say enjoy it. I guess I'll just have to say enjoy your retirement, but remember, the door is always open for you to come back. Morning. Thank you for this very humbling honor. I'd like to introduce uh, some of my family that came today. Uh, some are out of town, and some others had to work. So. My oldest daughter, Kim Weber. My other daughter, Tina Roth. And my sister, who some of you already know, she's an educator, was with the Board of Education of the City of St. Louis for 30-something years. 31, now works in Melville. Beverly Frazier. Thanks for coming today. And I see some friends out in the audience, too, that I used to work with. So Greg Simons and Linda Poor. They were instrumental in uh, getting me through the day every day at work. So I just want to thank everybody. I've enjoyed working with everyone over the years. Uh, we've built some wonderful partnerships and friendships. 
And I think the reason that those uh, friendships and partnerships developed is because we all had the same goal. And that goal was to stabilize our neighborhoods and to make this city safe for all of our citizens. So I thank you for all your support over the years. I'm going to miss everybody. I'm going to miss the job. Uh, but everything comes to an end, so we have to move on. So thank you for your support, and I really appreciate and I'm grateful for this recognition. Thank you. Before we give her this, if I had one wish, and I want to go back, you know, probably more than 10 years, I wish that every captain and lieutenant would be as accessible and available as back then Captain Phila was. Um, in Alderman Villa, she didn't have her hand on her cuffs, did she? So Jen and I are going to present her with this resolution and uh, major accomplishment. This was embanked before we got it here to the floor, so we don't have to make a motion to embank it. Uh, so here we go. Thank you, Thank you and congratulations Thank again you. on your retirement. You. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt our current resolution calendar. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We'll turn to our regular order of business. Introduction of honored guests. Any introduction of honored guests? Alderman from the 23rd. I'd like to have as my honored guest, Celeste Reeder from the Realtors. Any further introductions? Any further introductions? All the one from the 14th. Introduces my honored guest, Gary Otten from the Painters District Council Two, and my husband, Larry Howard, who's with me today, and also serving as my driver. Oh, excellent. <laughs> All along from the 16th. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. I would like to have as my special guests today David Holmes with the Plumbers and Pipefitters and Anthony Lancia with the Associated General Contractors. Any further introductions? Any further introductions? Alderman from the 10th, anything that wraps up? Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I have no guests today. This being January 13th, my special guest, Mr. Stevens, is enjoying the accoutrements of what this day is. This is National Rubber Ducky Day. He's home having fun with his rubber ducky. Thank you. <laughs> Probably also knew it was Friday the 13th that he decided not to come. We would dispense with line item number five, report of city. Report of city officials can be found in sections A, B, and C of the agenda and have been placed in all aldermen's mailboxes. We dispense with line item seven. Would anyone like to take any bills off of any of our informal calendars? Would anyone like to take any bills off any of our informal calendars? We dispense with line items eight through ten. First reading of board bills. Board Bill 246, sponsored by Alderman Ogilvie, an ordinance pertaining to commercial semi-trailer trucks prohibiting such traffic during certain hours along McCausland from the north boundary of southwest to the south boundary of Wise, exempting from the said prohibition emergency vehicles, including privately owned tow trucks when providing emergency service to non-commercial vehicles and vehicles with gross vehicle weight of less than 26,000 pounds and containing an emergency clause. 
Board Bill 140, 247, sponsored by Alderman Conway, an ordinance authorizing and directing the mayor to submit all necessary application to enter into agreement with the St. Louis Effort for AIDS or any other agency for the AIDS United Access to Care Social Innovation Fund and containing an emergency clause. Board Bill 248, sponsored by Alderwoman Young, an ordinance recommended by the Board of Public Service to vacate travel in the 14-foot wide north-south alley in City Block 802 as bounded by Shenandoah, 13th Street, Lamai, and Interstate 55. Board Bill 249, sponsored by Alderwoman Crewson, an ordinance recommended by the Board of Public Service to vacate travel on the westernmost 100-foot portion of the 15 through 20-foot wide east-west alley in City Block 4906A, as bounded by Waterman Lake, Portland Place, and Union, and also known as Portland Court. Board Bill 250, sponsored by Alderwoman Davis, an ordinance recommended by the Board of Public Service to vacate travel in the remaining 15-foot wide east-west alley and the 22-foot wide north-south alley in city block 896, bounded by Olive, 18th Street, Pine, and 19th Street. That's the extent of our first reading. Reference to committee. To the Streets Committee, board bills 246, 248, 249, and 250. To the Health and Human Services Committee, Board Bill 247. That's the extent of reference to committee. Second reading. The following board bill was reported out of the Ways and Means Committee. Board Bill 228, sponsored by Alderwoman Triplett, and on its authorizing the execution of a transportation project agreement between the city and 2118 Shoto Transportation Development District containing a severability clause. That's the extent of our second reading. We dispense with line item 14, perfection consent calendar. Board Bill 225, sponsored by Alderman Bosley, an ordinance recommended by the Board of Public Service establishing a public works and improvement project for the design and construction of the traffic management enhancement project involving various traffic management improvements on the city arterials and the city's traffic Operation Center computer systems containing a public work emergency clause. Board Bill 237, sponsored by Alderman Williamson, and on its authorizing and directing the Street Commission to take all necessary actions to honorarily designate the 1200 block of Clarendon as Reverend John Watson Sr. Avenue. That's the extent of perfection consent. Alderman from the 13th, you recognize on the motion for the perfection consent calendar. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the board, I move for a perfection of the aforementioned bills on the consent calendar. Move by the all in front of 13th, second by the all in front of 12th. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We will dispense with line item 16, third reading consent. Board bills 201, 69, 182, 220, and 227. All in Alderman from 13, you recognize us on the third reading consent calendar. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the board, I move for our third reading and final passage of the aforementioned bills on the consent calendar. Moved by the Alderman from 13, seconded by the Alderman from the 12th. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman True. Alderman Flowers. Alderman Bosley. Alderman Moore. Alderman Hubbard. Alderman Triplett. Alderwoman Young, Alderman Conway, Alderman Ortman, Alderman Vollmer, Alderman Villa, Alderman Onowitz, Alderman Wessels, Alderwoman Howard, Alderwoman Florida, Alderwoman Behringer, Alderman Rohde, Alderman Kennedy, Alderwoman Davis, Alderman Schmid, Alderman French, Alderman Boyd, Alderman Vaccaro, Alderman Ogilvy, Alderman Cohn, Alderman Williamson, Alderman Carter, Alderwoman Crewson, President Reed. Aye. Alderman Ortman, Alderwoman Florida, Alderwoman Davis, Alderman Boyd, 
Alderman Cohn, 25 aye votes. By a vote, you sustain the motion of the Alderman from the 13th and 3rd read and finally passed the aforementioned bills. We'll dispense with line item 18, report of enrollment. Board bills 201, 69, 182, 220, and 227. All other business being suspended, the president shall in open session affix his signature here too to the end that these may become law. First reading of resolutions. Resolution 288, sponsored by Alderwoman Cruz and the Board of Aldermen approves the Cathedral Square Special Business District budget. Alderman from 28, you rec recognize on the first reading of resolution number 288. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I request unanimous consent for resolution 288. Hearing no objection, please proceed, Alderwoman. Uh, resolution 288 is the adoption of the Cathedral Square Special Business District budget for 2012, and I move for adoption. Moved by the Alderman from the 28th, seconded by the Alderman from the 9th. Any further discussion? It's been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution number 288. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution 289, sponsored by Alderman Boyd. The Board of Aldermen supports the Community Action Agency of St. Louis County and its City Services Division in its efforts to become the eligible entity community action agency for the City of St. Louis and receive CSBG funding to provide services to city residents. Alderman from 26, you recognize on the resolution, first reading of resolution number 289. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I'd like to move resolution 289 to the uh, legislation committee, please. It's moved by the Alderman from the 26th, seconded by the Alderman from the 18th. Any discussion? It's been moved and seconded that we send resolution number 289 to legislation. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Madam Clerk, please sign resolution number 289 to the res legislation committee. So noted. That's the extent of our first reading of resolutions. Second reading. Resolution 276, sponsored by Alderwoman Crewson and President Reed. The Board of Aldermen notes that the assessment and equalization maintenance plan prepared by the assessor is hereby approved as required by law. Alderwoman from 28th, you recognize on the second reading of resolution number 276. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for adoption of Resolution 276. It's been moved by the Alderman from the 28th, seconded by the Alderman from the 20th. Alderman from the 28th, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Resolution 276 is the adoption of the reassessment plan by the Assessor's Office as required by state law. We uh, heard that resolution in committee this week, had a good discussion with the Assessor about the plans. Uh, this is a plan that we adopt every other year before the assessments happen. I think, uh, I think we all learned something in, in having this discussion in the Ways and Means Committee meeting, and so um, I'm glad that we, we sent it there last week, and I think it came out unanimously, so uh, hopefully we can pass it out today. All right, excellent. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? It's been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution number 276. All in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That's the extent of second reading of resolutions. Ms. Lane, unfinished business. We have none. Announcements. Monday, January the 16th, the office will be closed, the Martin Luther King holiday. Wednesday, Housing and Urban Development Committee meeting, 10 a.m. in room 208, the Kennedy Room. Friday, full board meeting, 10 a.m. in the chambers. That's the extent of my announcements. Any further announcements? All of them from 26. Mr. President, members of the board, I'd like to uh, wish 
our alderman from the 22nd Ward, our colleague, a happy birthday, and also Joe Vommer, a happy birthday today, right. Friday the 13th. Thank you. Oh, happy birthday, then. <laughs> alderman from third. President and members of the board, I have been selected to receive the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Nonviolence St. Louis Support Group Award on Sunday, January the 15th from 3 to 5 p.m. at St. Louis Community College, Harris Center, 3140 Cass Avenue. Thank you. Congratulations. Bob. Also, on Monday, the 16th, Martin Luther King Day at the Old Courthouse, I have also been selected to sing two songs for that Martin Luther King celebration. So if you want to hear this melodious voice, please come and <laughs> celebrate Martin Luther King Day with us. I'll get deeper if you come to hear me sing. Thank you. All right, thank you, all. All in from the third. 10 a.m. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, I'd like to announce a street speeding Thursday, 11 o'clock. Right, any further announcements? Any further announcements? All in front of 13, you recognize on the motion to excuse. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the board, I move to excuse the alderman from the 19th, 22nd, and 20. Fifth awards due to necessary absence. Moved by the Alderman from the 13th, seconded by the Alderman from the 12th. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Alderman from the 13th, you recognize on the motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to adjourn the meeting until Friday, 10 a.m., January 20th. Moved by the Alderman from the 13th, seconded by the Alderman from the 11th. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We stand adjourned. <laughs>